Hello, let's read along chapter 5, Consumer Rights. The collage you see below contains some news clippings of consumer disputes, judicial commission verdicts. Why did the people go to these organizations in these cases? These verdicts came about because some people persisted and struggled to get justice. In what ways were they denied justice? More importantly, what are the ways in which they can exercise their rights as consumers to get a fair deal from the sellers when they felt they had been denied a just treatment? In the marketplace, we participate in the market both as producers and consumers. As producers of goods and services, we could be working in any of these sectors discussed earlier such as agriculture, industry or services. Consumers participate in the market when they purchase goods and services that they need. These are the final goods that people are use. In the preceding chapters, we discussed the need for rules and regulations or steps that would promote development. These could be for the protection of workers in the unorganized sector or to protect people from high interest rates charged by money lenders in the formal sector. Similarly, rules and regulations are also required for protecting the environment. For example, money lenders in the informal sector that you read about in Chapter 3 adopt various tricks to bind the borrowers. They could make the producer sell the produce to them at a low rate in return for a timely loan. They could force a small farmer like Swapna to sell her land to pay back the loan. Similarly, many people who work in the unorganized sector have to work at a low wage and accept conditions that are not fair and are also often harmful to their health. To prevent such exploitation, we have talked of rules and regulations for their protection. There are organizations that have struggled for long to ensure that these rules are followed. Otherwise, rules and regulations are required for the protection of the consumers in the marketplace. Individual consumers often find themselves in a weak position. Whenever there is a complaint regarding a good or service that had been bought, the seller tries to shift all the responsibility onto the buyer. Their position usually is, if you don't like what you bought, please go elsewhere. As if the seller has no responsibility once a sale is completed. The consumer movement, as we shall discuss later, is an effort to change this situation. Exploitation in the marketplace happens in various ways. For example, sometimes traders indulge in unfair trade practices such as when shopkeepers weigh less than what they should or when traders add charges that were not mentioned before or when adulterated or defective goods are sold. Markets do not work in a fair manner when producers are few and powerful whereas consumers purchase in small amounts and are scattered. This happens especially when large companies are producing these goods. These companies with huge wealth, power and reach can manipulate the market in various ways. At times, false information is passed on through the media and other sources to attract consumers. For example, a company for years sold powder milk for babies all over the world as the most scientific product claiming this to be better than mother's milk. It took years of struggle before the company was forced to accept that it had been making false claims. Similarly, a long battle had to be fought with the court cases to make cigarette manufacturing companies accept that their products could cause cancer. Hence, there is a need for rules and regulation to ensure protection for consumers. Kindly go through all the illustrations in your book. It will help you remember and learn it better. Consumer movement. The consumer movement aroused out of dissatisfaction of the consumers as many unfair practices were being indulged in by the sellers. There was no legal system available to consumers to protect them from exploitation in the marketplace. For a long time, when a consumer was not happy with a particular brand, product or shop, he or she generally avoided buying that, avoided buying that brand product or would stop purchasing from that shop. It was presumed 
that it was the responsibility of consumers to be careful while buying a commodity or service. It took many years for organizations in India and around the world to create awareness amongst people. This has also shifted the responsibility of ensuring quality of goods and services on the sellers. In the consumer movement as a social force originated with the necessity of protecting and promoting the interests of consumers against unethical and unfair trade practices. Rampant food shortages, hoarding, black marketing, adulteration of food and edible oil gave birth to the consumer movement in an organized form in the 1960s. Till the 1970s, consumer organizations were largely engaged in writing articles and holding exhibitions. They formed consumer group to look into the malpractices in ration shops and overcrowding in the road passenger transport. More recently, India witnessed an upsurge in the number of consumer groups. By all these efforts, the movement succeeded in bringing pressure on business firm as well as government to correct business conduct which may be unfair and against the interest of the consumer at large. A major step taken in 1986 by the Indian government was the enactment of the Consumer Protection Act 1986, popularly known as COPRA, COPRA. You will learn more about COPRA later. Consumer Rights Safety is everyone's right. Reggie's Suffering Reggie Matthew a healthy boy studying in class 9 was admitted in a private clinic in Kerala for removal of tonsils. An ENT surgeon performed the tonsil operation under general anesthesia. As a result of improper anesthesia, Reji showed symptoms of some brain abnormalities because of which he was crippled for life. His father filed a complaint in the State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission claiming compensation of Rs 5 lakh for medical negligence and deficiency in service. The State Commission, saying that the evidence was not sufficient, dismissed it. Reji's father appealed again in National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, located in New Delhi. The National Commission, after looking into the complaint, held the hospital responsible for medical negligence and directed it to pay the compensation shows how a hospital due to negligence by the doctors and staff in giving anesthesia crippled a student for life. While using many goods and services, we as consumers have the right to be protected against the marketing of goods and delivery of services that are hazardous to life and property. Producers need to strictly follow the required safety rules and regulations. There are many goods and services that we purchase that require special attention to safety. For example, pressure cookers have a safety valve which, if it is defective, can cause a serious accident. The manufacturers of the safety valve have to ensure high quality. You also need public or government action to see that this quality is maintained. However, we do find bad quality products in the market because the supervision of these rules is weak and the consumer movement is also not strong enough. Go through all graphical illustrations and examples given in your book. Information about goods and services. When you buy any commodity, you will find certain details given on the packing. These details are about ingredient used, price, batch number, date of manufacture, expiry date, and the address of manufacturer. When we buy medicines on the packets, you might find directions for proper use and information relating to side effects and risk associated with usage of that medicine. When you buy garments, you will find information on instructions for washing. Why is it that rules have been made so that the manufacturer displays this information? Is it because consumers have the right to be informed about the part of goods and services that they purchase? Consumers can then complain and ask for compensation or replacement if the product proves to be defective in any manner. For example, if we buy a product and find it defective well within the expiry period, we can ask for a replacement. If the expiry period was not printed, the manufacturer would blame the shopkeeper and will not accept the responsibility. If people sell medicines that have expired, severe actions can be taken against them. 
Similarly, similarly, one can protest and complain if someone sells a good at more than the printed price on the packet. This is indicated by MRP, maximum retail price. In fact, consumers can bargain with the seller to sell at less than the MRP. In recent times, the right to information has been expanded to cover various services provided by the government. In October 2005, the Government of India enacted a law popularly known as RTI, which is Right to Information Act, which ensures its citizens all the information about the functions of government department. In effect, of the RTI Act can be understood from the following case. Amrita, an engineering graduate, after submitting all the certificates and attending the interview for a job in a government department, did not receive any news of the result. The officials also refused to comply with her queries. She therefore filed an application using the RTI Act, saying that it was her right to know the result in a reasonable time so that she could plan her future. She was not only informed about the reasons for delaying the declaration of results, but also got her call letter for appointment as she performed well in the interview. When choice is denied a refund. Abhirami, a student of Ansari Nagar, joined a two-year course at a local coaching institute for professional courses in New Delhi. At the time of joining the course, she paid the fees Rs. 61,020 as lump sum for the entire course of two years. However, she decided to opt out of the course at the end of one year as she found that the quality of teaching was not up to the mark. When she asked for a refund of fee, for one year, it was denied to her. When she filed the case in the District Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission, the Commission directed the Institute to refund Rs 28,000, saying that she had the right to choose. The Institute again appealed in the State Consumer Commission. The State Commission upheld the District Commission's direction and further fined the Institute of 25,000 plus appeal. It also directed the institute to pay Rs 7,000 as compensation and litigation cost. The state commission also restrained all the educational and professional institutions in the state from charging fees from students for the entire duration of the course in advance and that too at one go. Any violation of this order may invite penalties and imprisonment, the commission said. What do we understand from this incident? Any consumer who receives a service in whatever capacity, regardless of age, gender and nature of service, has the right to choose whether to continue to receive the service. Suppose you want to buy toothpaste and the shop owner says that she can sell the toothpaste only if you buy a toothbrush. If you are not interested in buying the brush, your right to choice is denied. Similarly, sometimes gas supply dealers insist that you have to buy the stove from them when you take a new connection. In this way, many a times you are forced to buy things that you may not wish to and you are left with no choice. Where should consumers go to get justice? Read again the case of Riji Matthew and Abhirami given earlier in the chapter. These are some examples in which consumers are denied their rights. Such instances occur quite often in our country. Where should these consumers go to get justice? Consumers have the right to seek redressal against unfair trade practices and exploitation. If any damage is done to a consumer, she has the right to get compensation depending on the degree of damage. There is a need to provide an easy and effective public system by which this can be done. The consumer can file a complaint before the appropriate consumer forum on his, her, own with or without the services of lawyer. You might be interested in knowing how an aggrieved person gets his or her compensation. Let us take the case of Prakash. He had sent a money order to his village for his daughter's marriage. The money did not reach his daughter at the time when she needed it, nor did it reach months later. Prakash filed a case in a district-level consumer disputes redressal commission in New Delhi. All the steps he undertook are illustrated here. These days, consumers as an individual or as a group called class action suit, file a complaint both physically or through internet and conduct the case through video conferencing. Please go through the illustration carefully. 
Brahma movement in India has led to the formation of various organizations locally known as consumer forums or consumer protection councils. They guide consumers on how to file cases in the Consumer Disputes Redressal Commissions. On many occasions, they also represent individual consumers in these commissions. These voluntary organizations also receive financial support from the government for creating awareness among people. Living in a residential colony, you might have noticed boards of residents' welfare associations. If there is any unfair trade practice meted out to their members, they take up the case on their behalf. Under a three-tier quasi-judicial machinery at the district, state and national levels was set up for redressal of consumers' disputes. The district level authority called District Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission deals with the cases involving claims up to Rs 1 crore. The state level consumer disputes redressal commissions called called state commission between Rs 1 crore and Rs 10 crores and the national level commission national commission deals with cases involving claims exceeding Rs 10 crore. If a case is dismissed in district level commission, a consumer can also appeal in the state and then in national level commissions. Thus, the Act has enabled us as consumers to have the right to represent in the Consumer Disputes Redressal Commissions. Learning to become well-informed consumers When we as consumers become conscious of our rights while purchasing various goods and services, we will be able to discriminate and make informed choices. This calls for acquiring the knowledge and skill to become a well-informed consumer. How do we become conscious of our rights? Look at the posters on the right and in the previous page. What do you think? The enactment of COPRA has led to the setting up of separate departments of consumer affairs in central and state governments. The posters that you have seen are one example through which governments spread information about legal processes which people can use. You might also be seeing such advertisements on television channels. ISI and Eggmark. While buying many commodities on the cover, you might have seen a logo with the letter ISI, Eggmark, Hallmark or plus F. These logos and certifications help consumers get assured of quality while purchasing the goods and services. The organizations that monitor and issue these certificates allow producers to use their logos provided they follow certain quality standards. Though these organizations develop quality standards for many products, it is not compulsory for all the producers to follow standards. However, for some products that affect the health and safety of consumers or of products of mass consumption like LPG cylinders, food colors and additives, cement, packaged drinking water, it is mandatory on the part of the producers to get certified by these organizations. Taking the consumer movement forward, India has been observing 24 December as the National Consumers Day. It was on this day that the Indian Parliament enacted the Consumer Protection Act in 1986. India is one of the countries that have exclusive authority for consumer redressal. The consumer movement in India has made some progress in terms of numbers of organized groups and their activities. There are today more, there are today more than 2,000 consumer groups in the country of which only about 50 to 60 are well organized and recognized for their work. However, the consumer redressal process is becoming cumbersome, expensive and time-consuming. Many a time, consumers are required to engage lawyers. These cases require time for filing and attending the commission proceedings, etc. In most purchases, cash memos are not issued, hence, Evidence is not easy to gather. Moreover, most purchases in the market are small retail sales. The COPRA, Copra was amended in the year 2019 to further strengthen consumers in India. Buying through internet is now included. If there is any service deficiency or defective product, service provider or manufacturer is also held responsible and would be penalized or even imprisoned. Set disputes with the help of a neutral Intermediary outside the Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission called Mediator is now encouraged at all the three tiers Consumer Commissions. 
After more than 30 years of the enactment of COPRA, consumer awareness in India is spreading but slowly. Besides this, the enforcement of laws that protect workers, especially in the unorganized sectors, is weak. Similarly, rules and regulations for working of markets are often not allowed. Nevertheless, there is scope for consumers to realize their role and importance. It is often said that consumer movements can be effective only with the consumer's active involvement. It requires a voluntary effort and struggle involving the participation of one and all. Thank you. If you like this audio, do subscribe to my channel and recommend it to your friends. Thank you.